Alexa, play Late Night Playlist. Late Night Vibes from Spotify. On Sundays, we do self-care. We've already cleaned the house and now I'm making myself a fun little drink of choice. Today, I'm trying my hand at a St. Germain's. Can we give you a little recipe? The St. Germain, the Prosecco, with a splash of club, ice, and squeeze a little lemon. Except I didn't have any lemons, and the only club soda I had was blueberry, so mine ends up being a little bit pink, but it's okay, we move. My self-care Sundays are really just about me resetting myself and feeling properly ready for the week. So I started off with an everything shower, meaning I shaved, exfoliated, you know, the works. And now I'm going ahead and just doing a nice, deep, nourishing treatment skincare routine. Not gonna lie, I've been slacking on my skincare routine as far as like layering and doing my exfoliating treatment. And it's really showing on my skin, especially this week, because I am on my period and oof, hormonal breakouts. Yeah, she gets to use. I'm not really like a face mask a physical like a physical face mask person i'm more of a chemical face mask and my favorite type is this liquid exfoliant from Paula's choice it's very strong so i only use it about once a week and after my skin gets used to it i go back and use it like twice a week but i always use it on sundays so i can remember that this is the day that i used it because i really forget it's like at one point i used it too much within the week and that was causing to dam a, like a damage in my skin barrier so it's definitely important to make sure you use her wisely and please use spf but if you're looking for a great exfoliator if you have rough skin acne scars or just like you know like a little at home chemical chemical peel basically i'd recommend that you give it a try since i've been breaking out a lot that also means that i am left with lots of scars from the acne so i am going in with this topical faded spray not the cream because they were out of the spray at sephora which was annoying but i was so down bad to get rid of these dark spots i just had to get the spray i've used their products in the past and it's great for just lightening and fading discoloration marks now to just keep everything locked in and seal them going in with this new moisturizer i've not tried it they recommend it to me as uh, sephora it's like a very girl you good you got it okay <laughs> let's try this again but like i was saying this is like a very neutral no additives just like a great moisturizer allegedly i've been trying it for about a week now and honestly i think i might be returning it it's not as hydrating for how much it was like 36 dollars and i need a good hydrating moisturizer even with oily skin i've learned hydration is really important so here are just new products i've been adding to my nighttime skincare routine i'll make sure to link them all below my favorite new product that i stopped using and i'm so glad that i'm using again is the ceo glow oil from sunday riley i really love using this as my finishing product it helps give like a nice overall glow to my skin like it's definitely giving glass skin and it has like vitamin c and turmeric which i feel like has been great for helping lightening my discoloration and dark spots do keep in mind, I don't do all of these steps like every day or all the time. This is why I call this like my Sunday nourishing skincare routine. During the week, I just focus on the basics, washing, moisturizing, and SPF. It's really just on the Sunday where I can do like my treatments and all that good stuff. Cause I've learned my skin less is more. And once I start to product overload, I'm just irritating, making my skin way worse. How much do I owe you? It's okay. It's on the house. Yeah, it's on the house. Now that I'm feeling like a well-nourished, moisturized, glazed donut, let's get into my favorite part of self-care Sundays, which is doing my hair. As cute as these little braids are, I can't rock this around all week. I need to have my hair done to not have the hair depression, if you know you know. So doing some type of like protective long-term hairstyle on Sundays kind of just helps take away the stress of having to figure out what am I gonna do with my hair? I've went ahead and got myself my little hair station set up. I'm watching a movie. I'm watching Hot Chicks. There's this sound on TikTok that I always hear. And I didn't know it came from this movie, so I just started watching it to see what the hype is. And it actually it's really funny and it's free on YouTube. The wig I'm gonna be installing today is from Yolisa Hair Company, who was also the sponsor of today's video. This is their Water Wave 5x5 HD Lace Closure. This wig did come with pre-bleached knots, which I love, which means I didn't have to do any customization tonight. Just like a simple install, really. And it's simple because it is a closure. And I like going for closures when it comes to my everyday wig choice. 
I feel it's really because there's less lace to worry about. Less lace equals less stress. And if you get the right type of lace, like it's HD, you can go ahead and wear it gluelessly. And this wig actually had clips and combs and adjustable strap and an elastic band. If you're watching my videos, you know I've been complaining about how these companies, I feel like, have forgotten that we need those to keep the wig secure. All these glueless wigs without clips, combs, like the lace is glueless, but the wig is not. I need something to hold her down. So I was somewhat joyous, as you can see, <laughs> that these had some clips in it, especially given that this was not even marketed as a glueless wig. But getting into my wig install, I just went in with my Maybelline Fit Me Foundation, which is my exact shade match. I use this to tint the under part of the lace. I just buff it in. So this way that lace is like my exact skin tone. If you're not a fan of closures because you feel like they're not versatile and you're stuck with one style, you're wrong, babe, okay? One of my favorite things to do with a closure is to turn it to the side like just shift it enough so I'll be able to get a nice deep side part. This trick is great if you have a shorter 4x4 lace so you can be able to really get deeper parting or just let it look more off to the side. Closures are really versatile, you just have to figure a way to finesse it. Now I'm going in with my cuticle scissors and cutting in that same, like I always say, up and down jag in motion which just helps prevent your lace from having that line of demarcation and it's going to lay a lot more naturally and flush upon your skin to lay down the wig i'm using my ebon lace spray the keratin one and i'm just spraying that underneath the lace and just tapping it around to get a nice even layer of everything using my blow dry and a rat tail comb i'm just pressing down that lace to help everything just really like melt and lay flat what I like about this wig was that even though right here I'm laying it down with the spray, during the week I'm able to just pop her on and go and it's not gonna like look like I did not glue my wig down. We're doing so I'm getting into my side part and y'all see how like that's giving frontal. It's giving I'm wearing a frontal, but it's really just a closure because it's a lot less lace to stress with. Which means it's gonna be a very quick install. And honestly, it really was. So after I found the side part where I wanted it to be, I went in with the Ebon Lace Spray again and just sprayed on the spots I wanted to be my baby hair so it can really just help hold them down flat without me having to use my hot comb. I went in and started just doing some tweezing and plucking throughout the hairline. I'm trying like a new technique with my baby hairs where I don't pluck them so much so I was happy that this wig came just a little bit pre-plucked and like left me room to pluck as much as I wanted so I was able to get like a nice thick baby hair look because I kind of miss it. I've been doing no baby hairs these days and it's cute and natural and all but I love a good big baby hair look. It's just cute. I like what I like. Anyways, I'm going in and just tweezing up that part as well to give it that nice crisp deep side part. I did have to go in and tweeze the back of the hairline because like I said earlier, it's slightly pre-plucked but not pre-plucked enough for me. So I like to go in and just pluck the hairline itself to thin it out a little bit, but not too much. This whole install, just this whole night, honestly was so relaxing for me. I had a movie, had my drink, phone on DD. &D. I'll talk to you guys on Monday. This is my day and the Lord's day as well. Now I'm just going and getting those baby hairs done. And I love closures as well because all you need is two baby hairs. And honestly, since I was doing a side part, I could really have gotten away with just doing that one little baby hair right here. But I wanted to be cute for y'all and do two on both sides. But naturally, I just do one baby hair and that's all you need because that's all you have space for. Doing something I haven't done in a while, which is curling the baby hairs with my mini cur flat iron. It's not a necessary step, but I do like to use it sometimes when I want like very dramatic, swoopable looking baby hairs. And I've learned that curling them under works a lot better for the swoop versus curling it outwards. But it's just like you kind of almost burn yourself each time. And I definitely burn myself doing it this time. To swoop my baby hairs, I'm using just, you know, Eco Styler Gel, nothing crazy. I've learned to keep it soft and not too laid down. You can't put the gel fully throughout the hair. So I don't put the gel on the hair anymore. I put the gel on the brush or slash edge brush, comb, whatever you're using and let that distribute the product so I'm not putting a lot. And just like that, the baby hairs were done. As fast as it was for y'all, it was not as fast, but felt just as fast as it was for me. So now let's get into styling and defining these curls. The only thing I used to define and detangle my curls was just a spray bottle of water and this new brush that I've been using. It's not meant for curly hair, but I've been using my curly hair and I feel like it really helps the curls form a lot better. 
slash wave because this is a water wave wig and I can say right now because I'm wearing this wig and I'm wearing it right now as I'm editing this is one of my favorite water wave wigs like texture it was super big super fluffy I've worked with Yolisa before Yolisa and why I work with them with, with the same type of like really big fluffy hair I think if you want big fluffy long hair definitely go for Yolisa company but you have to get the high density y'all Y'all don't be listening. I say I got the highest density and some of you go ahead and go get the 180 and wonder what happened. I'm not saying you're wrong, babe. I'm not. I'm just saying maybe you just didn't get the right density. Maybe. And another thing I've noticed at the same, in the same breath as I'm praising their big fluffy hair, I've worked with their straight hair and it's not that great. It's quite meh. I believe I've tried some of their other water wave, but it was a frontal wig and it wasn't this density and it wasn't as good. So I feel like it's really depending on like what product you're buying exactly. Like if you click on this link and you get the 150, I'm sorry, the 250% density and all the specs. If you end up doing that, please come back and tell us in the comment if it was just as good and as big as fluffy. Cause to me, as the influencer, the sponsored post, it was really good to me. As far as cons of the hair, it does poof up a lot. The hair does get really big, but I feel like for the look, this 28 inches, that's part of the vibe, but it does get really big. It is kind of the higher maintenance and it does get a little bit tangled up in the back portion, but it's something that it looks really pretty and it's super big and the lace was a good quality. But like I said, it's a sponsored post. I'm an influencer, all of that. So take it with a grain of salt. I can only speak on what I know. Once I've brushed everything, I like to do a good little scrunch and I leave my hair like this to air dry. Do not run your fingers through it because it's not going to dry really pretty. So I just let it dry like this. While the hair is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of some DIY eyelash extensions. I want to be an eyelash girly so bad, but the thing with being an eyelashes is one, they're very expensive and the way that I kind of have like a sensory thing with them, I rip them off like myself force them out of my eyeball every three days because I just don't like having things on my eyes. It's not worth me going getting them done expensively and professionally. I'd rather just do them at home and honestly create whatever set I like. Another thing too, when I get my lashes done, I never really like how they look. I feel like they're too droopy and heavy on my eyes. So I do a half lash look and I feel like it works a lot for my eye shape. To apply the lashes, I like to just coat the bottom portion of my lashes with the Falscara bonding glue on the bonding side. And I just put it really like only on the base part of my lashes, not in my waterline though. And then I use my tweezers to just gently place the clusters. If you guys want more like a detailed dedicated tutorial about how I do my individual lashes then comment down below because I feel like I didn't get the best clips of me doing it so you can't really see too much exactly but overall I feel like it's a bit self-explanatory I just make sure I'm coating the bottom mainly the bottom of my lashes with that glue because if you put it through your whole lash you're gonna start gluing your lashes together and it's not what you want it's not like mascara and I do a half lash look so I just finished using the long length right here which I'm showing you and now I'm gonna go and fill in the rest of like the quarter of my eye with the medium. This is what it looks like with both eyes finished. I don't know if you can tell, but I only have them literally on half my of my eye, kind of how I do naturally when I cut my lashes in half. I feel like this look is a great natural look for me to wear every day. I'm going in with these little eyelash curlers to just help press and push everything together. It's a great hack that I saw on TikTok and it helps just give my like lash more of a lift and a very curled up cat eye kind of look. It looks a little bit weird now because I don't have mascara on. When I put on mascara in the front part of my lashes, everything blends together because my natural lashes are now as thick and dark as the extensions. But overall, I feel like it's like a cute little just natural look. It helps me feel put together. Going in and just adding that bond part to the lash. Not the bond, I mean the seal portion of the falscara. This just helps seal the glue and make sure that it's not going to have your lashes sticking together and falling off. Honestly, I don't know what it does, but apparently it does something. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm not sponsored by falscara. <laughs> but that's really it for my lashes. I'm looking pretty cute and ready. These last me honestly about a week, but like I said, I have this thing where things in my eye get to me. So it doesn't make it to a week because I end up pulling them out like by Wednesday, but they do last up to a week. We got our lashes done, our hair done, skin is feeling nice and moisturized, and I low-key did my nails earlier, but I didn't show that, but I'm, yeah, I'm feeling like that girl. I'm feeling ready for the week.
I'm really trying to get more into my everyday baddie aesthetic, meaning like I'm giving I woke up like this, even though we all know I really didn't. And I'm learning free to be an everyday baddie. You have to do maintenance. Get your eyebrows done, get your nails done, get your lashes done, your hair done. Unless you're just bored looking like Bella Hadid. Even Bella Hadid don't look like Bella Hadid. Unless you're just bored and drop dead gorgeous. To maintain beauty every day, you literally have to maintain it. And there's something kind of therapeutic and healing in just putting love into yourself and wanting yourself to look your best, even though it's extra and it, you have to like set time for it. Duh, you're making time for yourself. So this is how I kind of just show some self-love and self-care. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was something different and fun for me to do. And if you guys want more like things like this, like a maintenance vlog, a shower routine, body routine, just other things, go ahead and comment down below because I kind of liked enjoying this video. But hope to see you guys in another one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out, Girl Scouts. Goodbye.